This video and all content on this channel is performed by a pest control professional and it is always recommended to hire a pest control pro in your area to perform any pest control in or outside your home. Pesticides can harm you and your loved ones. Anyone who is performing the information in this video is doing so at their own risk. If you decide to try the info provided in this video, please always check with the local laws in your area and read the labels of any product you use. The label is the law. Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control and today we're going to talk about cockroaches. I haven't done a cockroach video in quite a while and I thought it was time to do it. I've been getting a lot of questions about how do cockroaches get into my house and why do cockroaches get in my house? <laughs> um, so if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, consider subscribing to the channel. So. We're going to go over three types of, of uh, cockroaches that we have in Virginia. Um, the three primary types that I deal with that really are invasive and really do try to get into the house, the ones I get the most calls, most leads on, um, are German cockroaches, Oriental cockroaches, and Pennsylvania wood roaches. Now, this is the state of Virginia. We're not talking about palmetto bugs. We're not talking about you know roaches that you may get in other parts of the world. These are just the three ones that I deal with the most in Virginia. So, uh, they, this is excluding American cockroaches and brown banded roaches because you don't really get very many calls on those. While it does happen, um, you know, they, we're going to address the top three today as I just don't want to be talking for hours about cockroaches. Although I could. In fact, if you come on my live streams every Thursday night, uh, usually Thursdays after 9 o'clock, after I get the kids in bed, sometimes earlier if I can get on earlier, if the kids happen to go to bed earlier, but coming into the late part of the year, uh, as the sun goes down later and later during the day, uh, the kids are going to uh, not want to go to bed. So um, it gets later for me because I can't concentrate with the kids screaming at me, Daddy, do this and Daddy, do that. So uh, check me out every Thursday night live. Um, and we'll go over your bug issues and I can talk for over an hour you know on cockroaches then and answer all your questions about all kinds of different roaches if you want. Uh, we can even look up things on the internet and try to figure out what exactly you're dealing with and what kind of problems you need to do to solve your or what you need to do to solve your problems you're, you're having issues with. But today we're going to talk about wood roaches, Pennsylvania wood roaches is what they're called but most people just call them wood roaches, uh, oriental cockroaches which some people term water bugs, which is actually not true because a water bug uh, is actually what they call a toe biter. And if you saw one of them in your house, uh, yeah, you, you'd know that's not a cockroach. And uh, German, German cockroaches, water, uh, oriental cockroaches, and Pennsylvania wood roaches. Those are the top three roaches that I deal with every day that I get calls with all the time. In fact, I just came from a house with oriental cockroaches. Um, an oriental cockroach is a uh, blackish reddish brown color uh, the older they get the darker they get uh, as they grow in size they get really dark color and so a lot of times when you find them later in the year you'll find these really dark colored uh, cockroaches like I said almost black in color really dark the uh, babies are like a red brown brick red kind of color and uh, the German cockroach is tan they they're like uh, and, and just like the wood roach, the wood roach and the German roach are both tan in color. The uh, wood roach has wings and can fly. Uh, all roaches have wings, but the Pennsylvania wood roach is the only one that actually uses their wings to fly. They fly like a moth. They're attracted to light. You will see them at all times of the day and night. If there's a light on in the house, they will come to the house because they're drawn to a light. German roaches and oriental roaches are both light sensitive so they don't like to be out during the light the way i explain it to people is when you first wake up in a dark room and you turn a glaring light on it'll make you squint real bad and it hurts your eyes almost to even open them and look and you may even get watery eyes uh, imagine that's like a cockroach like a german roach or an oriental roach all the time it, they don't like to be in the light at all ever because it's just too bright, they don't like it, they try to shy away from the light. So um, typically, uh, both German and Oriental cockroaches you'll see in the middle of the night, 
when you go in the kitchen or the bathroom and you shut the light on and they'll start to scurry and run to try to get out of the light, try to squeeze into a tight place. Um, that's just how those roaches are. Oriental roaches are typically attracted to uh, rotting things like refuse, like underneath the house. They like to get into sewer drains. They like to get into storm drains. They're attracted to, um, you know, they like to crawl in nasty stuff. They're, they're really gross. They like decaying matter. Uh, German cockroaches are typically attracted to water. So if you are one to go to bed with a glass of water on the bedside table every night, they will start living on your bedside table. They will live around water heaters, coffee pots, sinks, uh, bathroom sinks, both kid bathroom and kitchen sinks. They like to live around. Uh, so basically any water source, I've actually found German cockroaches living in fish tanks um, because there's, it's a water source and so they, they prefer water. They like water. A lot of people will say, well, I told them kids to stop eating back in that bedroom and I told them they were going to bring the roaches back there, but really it's the water they're attracted to, not food. Um, while they will eat food, they're really just attracted to water. Um, but like I said, and the wood roach is really just attracted to the light. So what causes these bugs to come into your house? Why? Why do they even do it? Why did, what do they need in your house that makes them want to come inside? And how can we, the, the reason why you want to know why is so you can feel, figure out how to approach the problem. Because if the bugs are coming in the house and you know how they're coming in the house and why they're coming in the house, then you can actually tackle the problem really easily and, and get rid of the issue. So why do oriental cockroaches come into the house? The main reason these bugs come in the house is because of climate change. Now, not climate change as a political point of view, but when the climate changes. <laughs> so uh, they're seasonal is what I'm trying to say. In the spring and in the fall, these bugs will try to get into your house. If the temperature drops down into the 50s, these bugs do not like it at all. They like to stay out where it's warm and damp. They like to burrow in under mulch beds. They like to come in through sewer drains, floor drains in the basement. In fact, older homes, a lot of older homes, they don't even have the floor drain linked to a septic system. And so a lot of times the, the uh, oriental cockroaches will just come right up the drain. Um, they're actually, the, those drains, it's real common for a basement floor drain to get dry, meaning that there is no longer any water in the trap. And so those roaches will actually come up the drain from outside and you'll see them around floor drains and basement floors pretty regularly. Basement bathrooms are notorious for oriental cockroaches because they like to come in from the ground floor and work their way up. They get in crawl spaces. It's real common to find them in crawl spaces. Um, so these are where they come from. This is what they're attracted to. Uh, you can combat this issue by removing mulch, wood mulch around the house. It's not a good idea to have it around the house. It's better to use something like a pea gravel or a stone or even rubber mulch, something that isn't wood. The wood will rot, and it for, which is like I was saying, they like rotten things in the woods. They like to get up under tree bark and stuff. In fact, my dad and I used to split wood a lot, and when you'd split the wood and the bark would fly off the side of the wood, you'll actually find those uh, oriental roaches living under the bark. They like to live around rotting things. So mulch is absolutely that. And not only that, but mulch actually blankets the earth. So the earth under the mulch bed will actually be warmer than earth that isn't covered with mulch. And so uh, they will actually burrow underneath that mulch and they get right up next to the earth where it's warm. And so it's damp and it's warm. It holds moisture in. Perfect breeding ground for oriental cockroaches. In fact, it's a very common place for them to lay their eggs. So I really do recommend pulling mulch away from the house and putting down something that allows the earth to breathe, like stone. Stone is a really good thing. No maintenance at all. You just, you might have to clean it every now and then. I don't know if you got that Virginia red clay or not, because that stuff is horrible. Uh, and so I wouldn't recommend like a white pea gravel if you live next to some kind of a muddy mess. You're better off using like a mulch, like a, a like a, a rubber mulch, 
Now, I will admit, I have rubber mulch around my house. I like the look of, of pine bark mulch. I think it looks nice. You have to replace it all the time because it rots. Not only that, but it's food for termites. So I don't like to put wood mulch around the house. Um, treat around your windows and your doors. This is also going to help with the Pennsylvania wood roach. The outside treatment is the most important with wood roaches. Wood roaches are attracted to the light. Try to turn off porch lights. Don't leave dust to dawn lights or por porch lights on as these are attractants to wood roaches. So to combat both wood roaches and oriental roaches, because they come from outside, we want to treat around our windows, our doors, our eaves, soffits, um, porch lights. You know, if you've got a porch light that you do leave, leave on, let's say you've got a teenager and they're working out at the store or something and they're coming home late night or a wife or a husband that works a later shift and may not be home until midnight or so and you may want to leave the porch light on so they can see their way into the house. Um, that's fine. You can treat around the light on the wall. Do a spot treatment around outside the wall and this will help with wood roaches. You want to treat with a granular pesticide around the foundation of your house, typically out about three or four feet into the yard. You want to treat your mulch beds. If you're deciding that you don't want to change out your wood mulch, you need to treat your wood mulch because this will help a lot with oriental cockroaches. I do this every house. In fact, most every house. The house I just came from had wood mulch all around the exterior of the house. This is attractive to oriental cockroaches and wood roaches. Wood roaches will lay their eggs in wooden mulch all the time. Uh, you know, these are things you need to really target when you're dealing with oriental and wood roaches. Inside the house, you want to treat your baseboards and also around your windows and your doorways. These are the ways these bugs get in the house. If they're coming from under the house in the basement or a crawl space, you want to make sure you treat up around the crown or the seal plate. If your basement is not finished, then you treat where the wood meets the top of the foundation wall. That's a place these roaches like to crawl in. A lot of times they'll go up the foundation wall, over the plate, and then they're in your house. And then all they have to do is come up through a wall void or through a socket or something in the floor and or a hole or whatever, and then they're right there in your kitchen, in your bathroom, making you scream and drop plates or whatever. So. Just make sure that you do a very adequate treatment around the, the crown of the basement and of course the baseboards in the basement as well. Even if you don't have baseboards, you want to treat around the edge of the room because these are places that those roaches like to frequently crawl. And this will help a lot with your Oriental and your Pennsylvania wood roach. You want to treat at least once a month. Uh, for both of these breeds of cockroach, you want to start treating typically in February or March. And you don't want to stop until about June because these are the periods so from, from March, February, like late February, all the way up until about the first or second week in June in Virginia, because the climate is so mild and because you can have those cold nights all the way up until June, you can have 50 degrees at night, it happens. That's when the bugs are gonna be coming into the house. You wanna make sure you do once a month, treat your house, general pest control, uh, which I will link a, a, a video to that now on my general pest control to try to give you an idea of what to do to help combat these issues. So we've talked about oriental cockroaches. We've talked about Pennsylvania wood roaches. So let's talk about German cockroaches. Now this is probably the whole reason you're watching this video at all is because you want to know how the heck you got these stupid German cockroaches in your kitchens, how you got them in your bathroom, why they're coming out of your computer or your Xbox or your TV cable box. How did you get these stupid bugs? Because they're destroying your house, they're ruining your livelihood, and they're absolutely pooping in everything that you own, and they're disgusting, and they're crawling everywhere. Their babies are all over the place. The adults are all over the place. They're just everywhere. So German cockroaches were imported to the United States from trade with tropical islands. The German cockroach is actually native to tropical islands. So we trade a lot with those places. And so what happens is when we bring boxes, German cockroaches like to eat glue. They eat the glue 
that holds your cardboard boxes and your paper bags together. So it's really common in these places where they do a lot of commerce and they're handling a lot of cardboard boxes for the German cockroaches to be inside the cardboard boxes. They, they, they like to live in the corrugated cardboard and they like to eat the glue that holds them together. So it's a real common attractant for German cockroaches. So what do we do? We, well, the only way you got the roaches in your house in the first place was they came from somewhere. I, I do a lot of restaurants. And I'm not going to get into religion. I'm not going to get into the actual culture and explaining why this is a problem. But if you do a lot of takeout restaurant food, um, I mean, I've found roaches living in McDonald's before, okay? They come from McDonald's, too. You can get them from any restaurant. You can get them from any grocery store. You can get them from Kroger. You can get them from Whole Foods. doesn't matter. You can get them from anywhere. But the most common place that I have found my customers and just businesses alone that I service, the worst ones are usually Chinese restaurants, number one, and Mexican restaurants are number two. So I would stop dealing with you know, these types of restaurants. I would try to cut out your, your takeout altogether and then reintroduce your restaurants one at a time. And if you bring roaches in and you know that it was from this restaurant, stop eating at that restaurant. You know, that's really important. Takeout is really common from restaurants. Um, they're not as bad in grocery stores like they used to be. It used to be people would bring in German cockroaches from like a Kroger or a Harris Teeter or a Food Lion or, you know, a Giant Food or somewhere like that because the restaurants dealt a lot in paper bags, which, like I said, roaches eat the glue that holds the paper bags together. So it was really common for the bags to get infested with cockroaches, and then, of course, they bag your uh, groceries, and they used to ask you, paper or plastic, you know, or just paper is all they had. And so it was really common to get roaches this way. But since they've moved to plastic bags, Roaches aren't attracted to plastic bags because there's no glue that holds them together. They're just a plastic formed bag. So you put your groceries in it, you take it on out, and you don't ever have cockroaches from that. So that's, that's helped a lot in the spread of cockroaches. But they still do sometimes deal with paper bags. And so they do come from places like this. Your friends and your family can bring roaches into your home. Um, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an exterminator. I go in houses that are infested with cockroaches all the time. I have seen cockroaches crawling out of pocketbooks. I have seen cockroaches crawling on people, on their clothing, in their pockets. All right. I have left customer homes and had to pull cockroaches off of me before I even got in my vehicle. It is a really common thing for these people to bring cockroaches away from their house and bring them to your home or into their car. Um, you know, it's the same as bed bugs. You know, people get bed bugs from friends and family, and you can get cockroaches from friends and family too. If you've got a friend that you go to every year for Thanksgiving, or a family member that you go to every year for Thanksgiving, and you know they have a cockroach problem, stop going to Thanksgiving with these people. Stop going to their house. Stop picking them up and bringing them home. Offer to cater it at your own house. You know, you place that you know they don't have cockroaches. But the problem is, if they bring a crock pot from their house and they sit it up in your house with some mashed potatoes or something in it, they're going to bring roaches into your house because that crock pot was in their kitchen with their cockroaches. All right. So understand that this is a real common thing. People bring them in from other people's houses. This is how you get roaches. This is how you get German cockroaches. Now, this video has gone on for over 20 minutes. And so I'm going to link right now in the video, if you've lasted this long, if you've watched through all my dribble, a video explaining exactly what to do to get rid of German cockroaches. And I'm going to put it up right here, and it's going to be a little icon, and you just click it and go watch that video. If you're having problems with German cockroaches, I've already done a video about it. Uh, YouTube doesn't like to... Um, you know, put my videos out. The older ones have been out for several years, um, but the information is still good. I'm still using the same pesticides that I mentioned in that video. So far, they're still working for me. And so if anything changes, uh, also I, I have an Amazon page with all of these pesticides listed. Every single pesticide that I ever, you know, advise people to purchase that I've, I use them all myself. 
I don't ever recommend anything I haven't actually used myself. And so they're all linked in the description below. Click show more and look at the description and click my Amazon link. And if I think about it, I'll put a pinned comment at the top of the video so you can find that real easy. So hopefully this video has been informative. Hopefully you have learned more than you could ever want to learn about cockroaches just from a 22 minute long video. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget, live every Thursday night after 9.30, I will come on and I will answer any questions that you have. If I have missed anything that you can think of, leave a comment below and ask me. I read every single comment of every single video that comes through on my channel, every single one, because I have to approve the comments. I'm trying to be professional. I want only good comments. So leave a comment, ask me a question. I can't wait to hear from you. And don't forget, check me out Thursday nights because, shoot, that's even more fun. I love talking to people about bugs. I like helping people with their bug problems. And so don't hesitate to ask me anything you want. It doesn't bother me. I love helping people with their bug problems. So thank you. I appreciate it. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a good time. So y'all have a good one, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.